Hey there, students. So on this group, we're going to be going over um, six examples and how to expand on logarithms, okay? We're going to be focusing on logarithmic expressions with these series of examples. All right, so um, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at, oh, actually, we're going to write out instructions for the questions first. So expand, expand the following um, logarithmic expressions. Okay, all right. So question number one, we have log base three of x to the fifth y. All right, so how do we expand this? First of all, we have to establish the relationship between the two terms um, that are the arguments of our log, which is x to the fifth and y. All right, so what's the relationship? Uh, we have log base three of x to the fifth times y. And remember, when you're multiplying the arguments, it's the same thing as adding the log of the independent uh, term that you're multiplying, okay? So since uh, multiplication is addition of logs, you can then rewrite this as log base three of x to the fifth plus log base three of y, okay? Now I can also expand this further. You notice there's a power here, so I can use the power property the power property of logarithm to power down this power, okay? So it becomes, I mean, five times log base three of X plus log base three of Y, all right? So there goes the extended form for um, number one. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question number two. For question two, we have, the log expression, natural logarithm of a to the fourth divided by b to the third. Now, how can we write it in expanded form? Note that the relationship between these two terms that have been divided is division. Okay, so what does the division of the arguments mean? It basically means, or is the same thing as the difference of the respective logarithms. Okay, so to expand this, I'm going to write it as the natural log of a to the fourth. So we have division, we have the minus, okay? The natural logarithm of b to the third. Now, using the power property of logarithms, I can power down this four and also power down this three. So that's going to give me uh, four times the natural logarithm of a minus three times the natural logarithm of b. So there goes the expanded form of uh, question number two. All right, let's move on to question three. Um, on question three, we have um, the logarithmic expression, log base two of x squared y to the third over z. Okay, so these three uh, variables are the arguments of our logarithm. So let's see what the, the relationship is between them, and then we can switch them using uh, the appropriate property of logarithm, okay? So uh, let's write this out. This is basically the same thing as log base two of what's going on here, x squared times y to the third divided by, it's not right divided by two, I guess like this, divided by z, okay? So this multiplication will be a plus and this division will be a minus of the independent log. So this is going to become log base two of x squared this time we have a plus log base two of y to the third, and this division becomes a minus log base two of z. Okay? Now we're going to use the power property to expand it further. These two I can bring it down, power it down using the power property of logs, and then these three I can also power it down. All right, so my final answer is going to be two log base two of x plus three log base two of y minus log base two of z. And there goes the expanded form um, of question number 30. All right, let's move on to question number four. We're going to be expanding uh, uh, log base five of the cube root of um, x, y, z squared, okay? All right, so 
So in order to use the power property here, I have to express this radical as a power. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to use the nth root property of logarithm. I mean, the nth root property of exponent, sorry. If I use the nth root property of exponent for the argument of this logarithm, I'm going to have logarithm 5 of x, y, z squared, everything raised to the one third power. So the third power is taken as the third root, okay? As a uh, and the property of, of logarithm. All right, so keep that in mind. So that uh, with this, with it written in this form, um, to make things easier, I can go ahead and um, distribute this. I can power down twice, or I can distribute first and just power down once. So let's distribute the powers first, so I don't have to power down multiple times. Okay. X doesn't have a power, so the equal power is one. Y doesn't have a power is equal to power is one. So what I'm going to do now is basically distribute this one third to all three powers. Okay. What I'm using is known as the power of product property. All right. Power of product, so it's a, the product of powers, right? So you have the power of product of powers. So you just distribute the power to the power uh, of the product of powers in here. All right. So you're going to multiply them. And then what you're going to have is log base five of x to the one third y to the one third z uh, is going to be two over one times one over three right you just multiply across so that one is going to be two thirds so z is two thirds all right so there goes the argument of the log now um notice that the relationship between all these three uh variables is multiplicative right so you multiply x to the one third with y to the one third and again multiply by z to the two thirds so uh, the product of the arguments is the sum of the independent logs, right? So this product will become the sum of your individual logs. So we're going to write this as log base 5 of x to the 1 third plus log base 5 of y to the 1 third plus log base 5 of z to the 2 thirds. Okay? And all these three are powers, so we can now power them down. This power goes down. This power goes down using the power property of logarithm, and this power goes down. And then our final answer is going to be one third of log base five of x plus log uh, one third of log base five of y plus two thirds of log base five of z. So that was the expanded form of the um, original problem. All right. All right, let's move right along to question number five. Um, so on question five, we are going to expand the logarithmic expression log base of two of A uh, times BC raised to the one fourth power. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and do this, step to four. Uh, so we have to be really careful when um, working on this problem because um, if we customarily power down whenever we had powers. Um, before we broke down, before I applied the properties of logarithm. But in this case, we have to be careful because this one four does not affect the A. So we cannot power this down because we're going to be uh, taking a fourth root of A if we power it down, but this fourth root doesn't affect A. So what we have to do is we have to first of all separate them into two parts, and then we're going to consider BC to the one fourth power independent independent of A. Okay. So note the relationship between A and this uh, product right here is a multiplicative relationship. So using the um, quotient, I mean the product product property. Uh, logarithm, we can break this into sum, right? So we're going to have log base 2 of a, and this product becomes a plus, plus log base 2 of bc raised to the one fourth power. Okay? You can see this power now affects every the uh, entire argument here, namely bc, and it's now safe to power down. Okay? So now I can power this to fall down to the front of this log as a, a coefficient. Log uh, the two of A is simplified or expanded as much as possible. This one becomes uh, one fourth of log base 
two. Now, since this is a product right here, um, I can um, write this as a sum, right? So let me just write it again. So let's go BC. Now, I'm going to find the product property of logarithms again. I'm going to have logarithm two of A plus one fourth of logarithm two of B. Uh, uh, logarithm two of um, B uh, plus logarithm two of C. Okay. So um, this one fourth is, ex is affecting these two the sum of these two laws, okay? So that's where the parenthesis is there, all right? So now I'm gonna distribute this one fourth to both logs. So this will be distributed to this and that. So it's gonna become log base two of A plus one fourth log base two of B plus one fourth log base two of C, okay? All right, so this method that I showed you is the long method of doing it. So I'm going to show you another method, method two, uh, which is shorter, but it's also safer. Okay, there's a lot of room for mistakes here uh, in the way I did this. But the biggest area where uh, people will make mistakes is in this area right here where they forget to distribute this one fourth to these two logarithms that we separated using the product property of logarithms. Okay, so I'm going to show you another method that's shorter and safer. Let's uh, print to make a mistake. Uh, so I'm going to title this. This is uh, method two. Method two is in the same column. Okay. So for method two, let me write a question. Log base two of a times bc to the one fourth. For method two, I will first of all resolve this this uh, power right here. This power issue that I'm having right here. So what I'm going to do is I use the product of power property. To distribute this power to the B and the C. B is to the one, C is to the first. So I'm going to distribute this one fourth to the one and to the one. So this is going to become log base two of A times B to the one fourth times C to the one fourth. Okay? Now we have the product of three terms. Now what we're going to do is apply the properties of logarithms, and then we're going to have log base two of A. Product becomes the sum of independent log plus log base two of b to the one fourth plus log base two of c to the one fourth. Okay, and now we just power down. So power down this right here, and then power down the one fourth down there, and then we're done. Okay, so it's going to be log base two of a plus one fourth log base two of b. Uh, plus one fourth, one fourth of, let me write that again, uh, one fourth of one fourth of uh, log base two of C. All right, so you see how this method is much quicker and is also safer. Okay, you just involve um, making eliminating this grouping. Constraint here so that when I'm applying the product property of logarithms, I don't have to be careful as to what I'm doing where. All right. So there goes your final answer, which is basically the same as this one right here. Okay. So I highly recommend this method, but if you do this, you have to be careful to distribute this one fourth to every single term that you put down here. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to the last uh, example, question number six. Question six, we have the uh, law we're going to expand is the natural logarithm of five squared times the third root of three. All right, in this case, we have a numerical logarithmic argument. So to do this, what's the relationship between these two uh, terms here is the multiplicative relationship. So uh, what we're going to do is use the product property of logs when you multiply your add, right? So you're going to have the natural logarithm of five squared. And this kind of becomes a plus plus the natural logarithm of, I can also apply the nth root property here, the third root of three is the same thing as three to the one third, okay? Now that I have um, them separated, I can now power down using the power property of logarithm. This power goes down and this power goes down. 
and the expanded form is two times the natural logarithm of five plus one third times the natural logarithm of three. And there goes your expanded form for the original power. Okay? So there you have it. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, please feel free to subscribe just by clicking here to this channel so you can get updates to more cool videos such as this. Uh, more clips can be found on myGrafter.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.